Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video, another video where I try to fix something that's faulty. Now I didn't buy this, this is my own personal phone. Well it was when it used to work, about a year, I think it was about a year and a bit ago now. So what happened was, I bought this phone, it's just a Vodafone branded phone, but it's a really nice, it was a good quality phone, it was like their, their most expensive one that they did. I can't remember what I paid, two or three hundred pounds for it at the time. Uh, but what happened was I was out Christmas shopping and I was looking up something on the phone and I dropped it. It was in a, in a case and it dropped onto carpet. And I picked it up, didn't think anything of it because it was still working absolutely fine. It wasn't even that bad a drop. It just landed perfectly on the back. And uh, put it in my pocket. Later on, about half an hour later, I felt it vibrate. Thought I got a text message and when I looked at it, my phone was turning itself on. And then ever since then, all it does is turning itself on and then turns itself off and then turns itself on again and off and it would just keep doing this until the battery's flat. I believe it's called a boot loop. So I uh, wanted it repaired. It was still within manufacturer's guarantee, but because I cracked the back, now this happened about two weeks after buying the phone because it's like a glass back. Because it had damage on it, they wouldn't accept it back. So I took it to a phone repair shop just as I was passing, did no research into them. And basically they said, oh yeah, it needs new software, not a problem, be 40 pounds. So I thought, yes, yeah, it's, it's worth it. I really like this phone. So gave them 40 pounds, said uh, pick it up in two or three days. Two or three days went past and it wasn't ready, a week went past and it wasn't ready, they just fed me one story after another. A month went past, it still wasn't ready, and then two months went past and they just kept fobbing me off. Then I looked at the reviews of this company and basically everybody says that they just take your phone and then they uh, basically steal your phone, give you a load of excuses and sell it for parts. So I had a bee in my bonnet, so I did everything I could to get this phone back and eventually I did manage to get the phone back after irritating the hell out of them. But it was worth it because they're a dodgy company anyway. And uh, yeah, not that I needed the phone back, it's been in my drawer ever since, it was just a principle of it. So I did take it apart and I put a new battery in it because online a lot of people said that the fault was probably to do with the battery. Now, unfortunately, because this phone is kind of a, a rare phone. If it was an Apple, there'd be loads of information. But uh, this is, I don't know what the inside is. I think it might be an Alcatel from, from memory. But obviously it's a Vodafone branded phone, so they, they haven't sold loads of them. So there's not much information out there. But uh, some people did say it was a battery. Swapped the battery over and it still didn't work. Now, that was it as far as I was concerned. It was just a load of chips and stuff, so I couldn't do any more with it. But now that I've got my hot air soldering station and stuff, I'm wondering whether it's worth re-looking at this again. Thinking about it, when I dropped it it's probably one of those chips must be a BGA chip you know a ball grid array so where you have the chip with all the solder balls on the bottom and I'm thinking is what's happened is as it's dropped some of them have, have sheared off so the, the shock has knocked them off and I'm wondering whether if I put the heat on it for a while with a bit of flux whether it will make a difference so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to see if I can see if any of the chips look and a bit lifted. Maybe now, if I look closely through a magnifying glass, I might actually be able to see the problem. So I thought I might as well film it and uh, see if we can get this working. So as you can see, it keeps turning itself on, then this will flash and it will turn itself off, and then it will turn itself on again. It's currently charging at the moment, but I believe the battery is full. So the lights come on now, it's vibrated, it says powered by Android, but now what will happen is it will just turn itself off again. And I've done all this thing where you reset it, you know, where you hold down the power button and volume down or volume up. I can't remember exactly what it was, or maybe both of them, and it brings you to the menu. I've done every single one of those things on the menu, you and it still doesn't make a difference you know like completely wipe the phone etc so obviously it is an issue not with the software I think it's an issue with one of the chips somewhere where it's not finding the software so uh, in case you haven't seen my videos before I do not know anything about Android phones I'm not going to know what chips do what I'm not going to know where for example the software is held or anything like that I'm just going to do a visual check just to see if I can find like an amateur finding out what's wrong with it or not so let's take this thing apart originally when I did it I had to heat up the back with a hairdryer but I'm hoping now because it's already been kind of separated a couple of times that I will be able to just pop it off so I might as well take out the charger out of it and then we can disconnect the battery when we get it when we get it apart Let's zoom in a little bit. And let's see if I can uh, take this take this back off. I might have to get that. I might have to get the hot air on it again. Oh, here we go. I won't. Right. Okay. 
Okay, that's the fingerprint thing at the back here. So let's see if we can uh, disconnect that. There we go. Now I'm not sure how well everything's been put back together because when I changed the battery out on this, I uh, when it didn't work, I think I just threw everything back together. So I don't know now whether everything is going to be intact or not. Okay, let's take it. Uh, let's take it apart and see what. Uh, see if we can see anything obvious. I, I definitely didn't remember seeing anything obvious before, but I wouldn't have looked through. For example, like a magnifying glass or the macro feature off the camera to, to find out. Okay, so that should be the battery disconnected. So what I want to do is I just want to get to this main board here. So I believe that I need to work on this part of the board here because I can't see that anything else would be affecting it because this is just things like the camera. Uh, I don't know, would it have some proximity sensor or something like that? Also the flash. So I'm going to leave all those things I'm going to leave all those things where they are and just concentrate on this bit here. Right, I think I'm going to have to take off. Let's just undo this camera to begin with. There we go. I think I'm going to have to take off these shields and see what's happening inside. Okay, now looking closely at this, annoyingly, all uh, everything seems to be under the shields apart from this main chip here. And this main chip looks like it corresponds with this, I presume it's thermal paste on this bit here. I'm wondering if I can connect it up, not everything obviously, but I wonder if I can connect it up and put pressure on uh, this chip here just to see if it does anything because then that might give me a guideline of where which chip is faulty. It's going to be quite hard for me even just to remove the shields from here because there's so many connectors that have bits of plastic around them and when I get the hot air on this to, to melt it to get the shield off because it's soldered all the way around then what's going to happen is I'm just going to end up melting these connectors even if I cover them with captain tape I'm pretty sure the amount of heat that I'm going to need is probably just going to melt the plastic anyway. So really unless it's something to do with this chip here I'm going to be I'm going to be struggling. And even this chip here can't see it in the camera but it looks like it's kind of glued down. It looks like there's stuff all around the edges. It kind of feels smooth all the way around. So maybe as an extra kind of strengthening thing after it's soldered they put like maybe some kind of epoxy some sort of glue or something to keep that chip down. Let's uh, try to connect it up. Put pressure on this chip now. Oh, I can feel it's very hot. I don't think I'm going to be able to hold this with my finger, it's too hot. I'm going to need to get some foil, I think. And this maybe what I can do is I can ball up this thermal paste for a minute and then uh, put a load of pressure downwards on it. I'll do the same job on it.
No, it's still just turned itself on and off, even though I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on there, so maybe it's not that chip. Right, okay, I'm going to take it apart again, get my multimeter out, just to see if I can see anything, uh, anything obvious, just in case I see something like shorting where maybe it shouldn't be shorting. find anything wrong with the capacitors on it there's not many on here but I was just testing them to see if they were shorting to ground or not and the ones I went across are not I think I'm gonna to have to try and get these shields off I'll see how easy they come off I'll get the hot air station on it and I'll heat up some of the ones that are not near the plastic like this one here see if it comes up and uh, then I can worry about some of the others Right, so I'm just going to be fast forwarding through all this. All I'm going to do is put a bit of flux around the shield here, put the hot air on it, see if it lifts off or not, and then uh, I can do the same around the other ones. came off better than I thought it would do. Right, so now it gives me a chance to look in here to see if there's anything obvious and then I can move on to the next one. I'm just going to let it cool a bit so I can work with it. Okay, so thinking about it, I have been testing for shorts to ground on the capacitors and uh, I don't believe that any of the chips have failed because I know the history of this one. I haven't bought it off eBay and I know that I physically dropped it on the floor, which makes me think that it's one of the chips that have lifted. So I don't really know if it's worth me checking for shorts everywhere because, I mean, I suppose there is a chance that one of the chips could have gone faulty when I dropped it, but I think it's more a shock thing that's lifted it off the board. So I think what I should do is... I think I'm, now that I've got this shield off here, I think I'm going to cover it in flux and I think I'm going to heat it all up just to see if any of them can reflow. So I'm going to put the temperature at 480 degrees C, but I'm going to have the airflow quite low. So let's say now on my station the airflow goes to 8, I'm going to go to 4 halfway. And I'm just going to heat it all up. And then if there was a problem with one of the smaller chips, then you see, you never know that it might resolder itself, possibly. I think that's probably the best thing to do and then when I've done that one I can then take the next easiest shield off and just work my way work my way around. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just covering it all in flux and let's see what happens. Right, everything on there was definitely moving around the place because when I tapped it with the tweezers, I seen them move. So I'm just going to let that cool and then I'm going to move on to the next one. I can also see that there's other chips around here as well, so I might as well do them. They're the ones out in the open. I'll do those and then I think I'll put it back together, see if it's working and then move on and on and on. Right, that's interesting, have a look there. So you know I've been, well I've heated up everything here until they were all moving, because I was just giving them a tiny tap and I could see they were floating. I did this one, 
this one and this one and this one and they were all floating but now look look at this big chip here can you see there's two solar balls here and I don't remember seeing them before you see just uh, just here here and here so yeah are they let me just see if they're loose or not yeah look they're coming out there you go so what's that about because uh, obviously when I was heating here there was also heat going here on the chip what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back in now just to see what's happened but that's probably not a good that's probably not a good sign there is it right unfortunately it's not even turning on now so it's probably to do with that main chip so I think what I should do is take the shield off there and uh, the thing is, if those balls have come out now, then by me heating it up, it's not going to make any difference, is it? I mean, those balls have physically come out. Remember, I haven't added any solder to it, so it was an excess solder. So now that says to me that it's not going to uh, it's not going to work. I wonder why they decided to drip out that way. Maybe the board was at a slight angle and they dripped out. Don't know. It's definitely not doing anything now, which is uh, which is a shame. Well, I'm going to take the shield off that main board and see what's happening. Right, I've heated it up that much that this uh, connector's come off the other side, but I might be able to, I might be able to get it back on again. This shield really isn't coming off, and also my soldering mat keeps bubbling up, which is, uh, which is really annoying. I think I have to go onto a thicker part of the mat. So I'm going to add more. I'm going to add more flux around the outside. I'm really not getting anywhere with this uh, heat shield. There we go. Excellent. Right, okay, what's interesting is I can see two more balls here and also three little balls on this side now. So let me zoom right in. Okay, so this is that chip and if you have a look, there's one here. This little one here. You can see it's moving. And one next to it. There, that's two. Okay, so you can see there, and also three here. They've gone hard. So I'm a little, little bit confused why the why the balls are coming out of it. Unless this chip was badly lifted. Why would the balls be forcing themselves out? Surely they would rather stay where they are rather than work their way out this way. If you know the answer to that, please put it down in the comments because that's a little bit confusing to me. But I'm going to get my multimeter and just go across a few things here, see if I can see anything. Right, okay, so when I'm set to continuity, there's, uh, there is quite a few shorts, but again, it might be normal because I remember on the PlayStation 3 video, I was told that if the chips don't use a lot of energy, then it can show as a short, but it, not, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's faulty. So uh, if you have a look here, if I go across some of them here, for example, these look okay. Yeah, just one side shorting. I'm just going across the capacitors. But then the ones around this chip here, we have some that they're shortened on both sides. Uh, 
Not all of them, but some of them. But more worryingly, I'll put the camera on macro, but I don't know if you're going to see it, but I can see it when I look through the loop here. It looks like on this particular chip, it looks like some of the solder balls are bridging on this one here. So uh, let me show you that. Right, so if you have a look at this little chip here where my finger's on, if you look, can you see the balls underneath it look kind of nice? Now remember, these balls are going to be going all the way through. But you see they look sort of all individual and they look quite nice. Now if we go to, can't really see properly there, but they kind of look okay. Let's look this side. Can't see there. But look at this, this one's here now, look here. Can you see? Where is it now? It looks like this one here and this one here. Can you see they're not, to look, individual, individual, but they, can you see that's wider there? And also that looks bigger than the others there. But more worryingly is the fact that the solder balls were coming out of this one here. And also if you have a look here now, you can see. So you can see the kind of glue. It's very smooth. In fact, listen, you can't even hear anything. That's really smooth. But yet the balls have forced their way out of this glue where the, where the glue's balled up. So I don't know when the glue gets hot. Does it, there you go, you can see they're popping out now, there. I don't know when the glue gets hot, does it kind of suck the balls out of there? I don't know. Not sure, but that's not right. So realistically now, this is never going to work again. So just out of curiosity, I'm going to put a load of flux around this chip and this chip. Just heat up the hell out of them. There's no point in me taking them off because I'm not going to be able to reball them. I haven't got the right stencils. I don't own any solder balls and I don't own any reballing equipment. So this is just really for a bit of fun. So I'm just going to heat this one up until it's, until it's moving. Heat this one up until it's moving. Just in case you never know. Well, I mean, I do know the balls have come out, but I could be lucky and they could be a couple of the earth ones, <laughs> the ground ones, you never, you never know, there is a possibility, it's unlikely, but I'm just going to heat them both up now, just to see what, uh, see what happens, plug it back in, see if we have anything on the screen, and then give up. So, I suppose the proper way to do this would be to try to scrape away all that glue, but I'm not really sure how you do that. And also, I don't know whether I would cause more damage in doing it. So I'm putting flux around here. It's not really going to do anything. On this little one, it will. It might work its way under. I'll put a load of flux on that one. But this one's not going to get through the glue. So really, all I'm going to be doing is heating up the chip. But just doing it purely out of curiosity. You know what? While I'm here, I might as well just do the whole thing. I might as well do everything under this shield. Right, so that one's loose, so I'm not actually wobbling it around, well I am, but you can see I'm just tapping it, can you see it's floating? Yeah, so I'll leave that one now because obviously those solder balls must have reflowed underneath and I'm just going to work on the other smaller chips, then work on the big one. Yeah, they're all, they're all loose. Let's try this one here. Yeah. And uh, so now it's just a big one. Put some more flux on this big one and also I'm turning the airflow up. Turn it up to six out of eight. Now because of the glue I don't even know if it's possible for this chip to float or not. Or maybe it just requires too much heat. Okay, well that popped didn't it? So I suppose now I've uh, 
<laughs> I've ruined that one. Or is that just the heat getting out from underneath it? I mean, it is moving now. Let's just see if it's going to move the other sides. Let's move it up there. Yeah, okay, that's moving everywhere. So let's uh, press down on that hard, just out of curiosity. I think I've moved it, hold on. Doesn't help because my solder mat keeps uh, bubbling up. Right, so take the heat off that and let's press it down. Now, in pressing it down, I might have moved it ever so slightly, in which case, then they're not going to be on the right pads anymore. There we go, let's just leave it at that. I'm going to let it fully cool down, give it a clean with IPA, and then we'll pop it back in just out of curiosity, just to see what happens. Really, it's just for my own peace of mind, just a little bit of fun. This was only in the, the drawer. It's only going to get older and older. It's more and more worthless with every week that goes past, because obviously we all know that older phones are not worth any money. So, uh, yeah, it's just for the experience, really. So I'm going to get back to this now once it's cooled down. Okay, I'm just going to give it a clean now with IPA. Okay, I'm just going to let that dry. It's still not perfectly clean, but it's going to be good enough to test. And obviously, if it does work, which it's not going to, I'm 99.999% sure it's not going to work because I'm missing solder balls on it now then uh, I can always uh, clean it up again. But if it's a junk board, there's no point in me cleaning it up anymore because I've done what I needed to do on it. Right, okay, it's sufficiently dried now, so let's pop it back in and see what happens. I'm just gonna leave all the shields off it. Okay, this has been plugged in now for three or four minutes. It's still not doing anything. I can't even feel the chip getting warm anymore. So it's exactly the same as when I was heating up the bottom chips and a couple of the balls dropped out. It didn't turn on then either. So a little bit of a shame. It would have been nice to heat it up and for it all to start working. But for me, it was a little bit of experience because I quite enjoyed heating the chips up and just seeing them float and how long it takes to float. So this massive one took much longer than the smaller ones to start floating. And I quite like just giving them a tiny little tap just to see them floating because that takes a little bit of uh, getting used to, just, you know, not <laughs> whacking it too much. So unfortunately, yes, it's not working. But remember, it wasn't working beforehand. I already brought it into a shop for them to try to fix it and they didn't fix it. Whether or not they tried or not, I don't know. I'd like to think that they did. So maybe it was never going to be an easy fix. But still, it was thrown in the drawer beforehand, not doing anything, and now it's still going to be thrown in the drawer. So I haven't actually lost anything by giving it a go. And I suppose I've gained a little bit of experience in heating up the chips to see how long they take, different sizes before they start to move. So really, that's going to be, that's going to be good for me. But as far as this phone is concerned, unfortunately, it still doesn't work, which is, uh, which is a shame. I'm trying to think, is there anything I would have done differently? I don't think so. I mean, I, I started on this one here because it was away from all the plastic. I was pleased that I managed to heat these chips up here without melting these, which was good because I was angling the air gun you know, right at the very top of it. Hence the reason why the balls came out of this one, because I was angling the hot air gun kind of right at the very top here. And what I've done is I've probably put too much heat on this little bit here. 
but even if I started with this big chip, would it have made a difference? Possibly, I suppose in hindsight, I would have put flux around this big chip and I would have started on the big chip. Still a bit confused why the solder balls came out of that rather than staying in place. Maybe it's because the pads had sheared off completely and they were trying to find the next easiest thing to stick to. And maybe with the glue being here, maybe the glue kind of sucked, sucked them out. I don't know, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it unfortunately. There's no point in wasting any more time on this. This thing is never gonna work because those solder balls have now left the chip and I'm not gonna be reballing that chip because I haven't got the experience, I haven't got the chip, I haven't got the stencil and all the rest of it. Am I gonna pay someone else to do it? No, of course not, because I can probably buy this phone second hand for probably around about 100 pound now, so it's not gonna be worth doing that either. But it was still worth a try. I'm glad I gave it a go, but it wasn't successful. But never mind, sometimes you have success and sometimes you don't, and that's the way it goes. So if you enjoyed it, I appreciate it. If you still give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.